Hey everybody, so we're back with whatever episode this is of Near Beer Reviews. And as promised, today we are looking at Odul's Amber. So Odul's, for those who don't know, before we go into the explanation of what this will be for this episode, Odul's is actually produced by Anheuser Busch. That is the company that produces Budweiser, famously. So this is quite a bizarre episode to do, quite a bizarre product to look at, because Budweiser quite famously now has Budweiser Prohibition Brew. So um, it would seem like the obvious choice to phase out Odul's, but it seems that they've gone in a different direction. They now have a two-tier system where you have the slightly higher price bracket for Budweiser Prohibition Brew, and now they've reduced Odul's to a lower price bracket which is great for the consumer to have two options for prices. Um, And it's also a strange option that they now have two major label um, alcohol-free beers, uh, which is interesting. And it's also, I read somewhere that they're looking to have, I believe, um, 25%, so a quarter of all of their beers that they offer by, uh, they said some year in the 2020s, um, as alcohol-free, which is another interesting development that comes out of Anheuser-Busch. So, before we go any further, what is a near beer? Near beer is an umbrella term that refers to either non-alcoholic or if you prefer alcohol-free beers. The way that I review beers when I look at them is in three categories. Presentability, which is to say how the product looks in its beer, in its bottle or in its can, and how it is poured as a beer. Then, of course, there is price, which is the value that you, the customer, get, the perceived value versus the cost you paid. And then, of course, we have taste, which is to say the smells, the flavors, the aromas, all of those things in one handy bracket. For each of those three categories, there will be a rating given, and there are three ratings that are possible. There is the poor rating, which is the dud rating. You have the middle of the road, needs improvement but is otherwise okay that is called the hot full rating and then of course there is the topping class cannot be improved that is the suds rating all right so let's jump straight into presentability with the um odor's amber so the can is quite interesting it looks nice with its nice uh, walnut shaped um kind of oval framing that it has there, but it's quite cluttered. There's a lot of wording that exists within that walnut. Um, It's rather unnecessary as well. For some reason, Anheuser-Busch found it necessary to tell us that it is de-alcoholized beer, as well as telling us that it's alcohol-free beer, which is, um, let's call that interesting as a choice because all alcohol-free beer is one of two um, processes that it goes through to become alcohol-free. So a small science lesson here. It is either dealkalization or another process, which I cannot remember the name of, but essentially it's pressurization. So dealkalization is raising the temperature, essentially cooking the beer, then cooling it back down. Once it cools back down, the alcohol content is gone. The pressurization process is done in the vacuum, so it goes through a series of filters and meshes and ends up being alcohol-free on the other side. Um, so it's really kind of unnecessary that they told us that it was de-alkalized. It really doesn't matter. Um, so it's a pretty cluttered um, can. The thing that I did like about it, however, is it's got that nice um, uh, Bald Eagle that they have, the, the Anheuser-Busch logo, the, the capital A with the, the Bald Eagle coming out of it. That was a nice little touch, I like that. Um, how it looks, it doesn't really look like an ember. As you can see, it looks actually more like a uh, an Irish red, really, which is, uh, I mean, that's okay. So in terms of how it looks poured, because it looks completely different to an ember. An ember is like, um, Ember is like a British person saying a, a blonde ale. It's, uh, no, sorry, I am wrong. It's slightly darker, but it's not a red. It's not a, uh, it's not a dark or a brown, but it's also not an ember. It's in between. So, no correction there. Um, so in terms of presentability, because of the can being cluttered and because of it looking like an Irish red, 
I'm actually going to give this a hopeful. I'm not going to give it the dud rating because I don't think it really deserves that. I think it's doing an okay job as a budget, and I mean real low priced here budget. So yeah, hopeful rating for that for sure. Price, I paid for a 12 pack, it was $12.99. So it's barely more than a dollar per can. That is absolutely unbelievable for a non-alcoholic beer today. That is unheard of. So for one dollar per can or just over, uh, and then you obviously have your after sales taxes on that. That's actually very good. Now, um, so for price, I would it, it's clear it has to be a suds rating for sure. Now for taste, let's give this a smell first. See, it doesn't really smell of anything, but it has this um, smell that reminds me of like uh, stouts in the UK, which is to say it just smells of hops. It doesn't really have any kind of notes of anything, it's just hops. Um, so let's give it a taste. So the taste is very it's actually quite nice. Like I've let this settle for a few minutes and let the carbonization go. I have tried one of these before and if you drink it straight, poured straight away and you haven't let the carbonization filter off a bit, it does taste a bit um, a bit stale beer kind of flavoured but when you let that carbonization go, like I've let this sit for approximately four minutes before drinking it here, It's kind of a middle of the road amber. It's not perfect, it's not great. Um, it does taste a little bit closer to a really poor man's uh, brown ale uh, than an amber. Um, so it's not my favorite flavor. Um, but because it's not bad, and because it's one of these uh, Old Faithful beers, Old Faithful alcohol-free beers, similar to Beck's Blue, which everyone who doesn't drink or is a designated driver knows Beck's Blue. It's just Old Faithful, it's been around forever, and it's a name you can trust. It doesn't taste awful, but it's also not great. Uh, because of that, I am going to give it a Suds rather than a Hopful. So for the taste category is a Suds rating. So overall rating for the Odal's Amber. Um, again, because it's Old Faithful, because it's one of these beers that anyone can trust. I mean, this is available North America wide. It's available Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Uh, interestingly, they do not have it in Europe and the UK because of the Budweiser Prohibition brew. That is what they phased it. They phased this out, I believe, in the UK and Europe, and then uh, phased in prohibition brew in those countries but because it is the um, reliable go-to beer that you can rely on if you're a designated driver the overall rating for me today is going to be suds and if I was to give it an A to F rating I'd be looking at a B because it, it does what it says on the tin it's cheap you can get it and rely on it when you need it so stay tuned everyone, we'll be back with another beer soon, and thank you so much. Like, share, subscribe.